Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a new video. My name is Katie and today I'm trying out the Grabby 12 Watercolours travel set. I want to say a massive thank you to Grabby for gifting this to me. I did do a video last year which featured an item from their shop so thank you again to Grabby for reaching out to me. Also they've given me a discount code which you can use in their shop too. And I'll pop that down in the description and probably on the screen somewhere also. I'll also leave a direct link to these watercolours as well if you want to go and check them out. Anyway, anyway, waffling aside, let's talk about what I've been sent, shall I? As you'll see, the item was in a nice, beautifully illustrated cardboard box and within that was a pouch which contained the goodies. The items inside are a eraser, a pencil sharpener, a woodless pencil, a black graphic pen, a little watercolour pad with 12 sheets in there and a travel brush which is a round size 4. And I'll be really honest, I've not used travel brushes for years. I tend to find the ones I've used before are those really teeny tiny ones. This one is actually really nice. I like the weight of it and it's a really nice brush but we'll get into that when we do the swatching. And of course, without further ado, let's talk about the watercolours themselves. They come in a nice portable tin, which have mixing palettes either side, or you can use them as mixing palettes. I tend not to very often, however I do in this video. Inside there is the woodless graphite pencil, and that comes in a plastic container, so hopefully there should be no graphite all over your lovely paints. The tin itself as well has a loop underneath so you can slide your finger through and hold it and I guess work on the go. The paints themselves are mineral based student grade and they come in half pans. And whilst past me is going through the tin there also you can actually remove that layer and I reckon you could slot some more half pans in there as well should you wish to. Well, let's talk about the colours. So we have a lemon yellow, a cadmium orange, a cadmium red, rose, ultramarine, royal purple, cerulean blue, sap green, burnt umber, red copper, Payne's grey and a white. I noticed when I added the water to these they activated pretty quickly and I didn't have to jam the brush in there to get things moving. They just pretty much worked as you would expect. And the mass tone of these colours is lovely and vibrant and obviously when you dilute it, it's got quite nice characteristics depending on which paint colour you choose. I'd have to say my favourite colours out of the set are the rose, the royal purple and you've got to love a Payne's grey. And I appreciate that there is a Payne's grey in there when I have bought 12 sets of watercolours before, sometimes having that deep dark almost black colour in there is missing so it's actually really quite a valuable colour to have in your tin. I also like the range of colours that we have in there, I think there's quite a good balance and if there is one or two colours that you're missing there's enough primaries to work with to mix your colour you want and we'll get into that with the picture I paint shortly. Here's what the swatch card looks like dry and I'd say it did get a little bit lighter but not massively and it still retained a lot of vibrancy there. So what did I decide to do with these paints? Well we are in December now and I thought I would do something to celebrate the festivities associated with this time of year. I'll be honest I did use a sheet of watercolour paper I already had in and that is the etch -a watercolour paper and the reason being is I personally like to just work on a larger surface however utilising that little sketch pad was perfect just for checking what the colours would look like before I committed them to the page. Does anyone else do that? I started everything off by just adding a wash of cerulean blue and created a bit of a gradient edge around the robin as well as the border of the piece. 
For the ivy leaves, I did a very light wash of the lemon yellow and then went over the top in a colour I'd mixed myself using the Payne's Grey and a hint of sap green with possibly a dash of that lemon yellow in there. And I absolutely love how these bloomed with this wet and wet technique I've got going on here. As I'm usually quite tight and neat with my artwork, this was a nice way of trying to loosen up my style a little bit and just see what the paint could do if it was just left to do its own thing. But I really like how that worked out. Again, the same process was used for the other section of ivy leaves, which are beneath the first section I've done there. And yeah, it was fun just playing about and trying that out a little bit. Now I'm going to talk about the brush because like I mentioned earlier, I don't really have many travel brushes. This is gorgeous. This is, this is what I wish they would put in a lot of watercolor sets instead of the water brushes. I know everyone's got the preferences, but me and water brushes do not get along very well at all. So I actually appreciate having, I suppose, what you would consider as a proper brush. I also really like the weight of it as well. I, I, that might just be me being a bit weird, but I don't know, certain, certain supplies, especially brushes, I do like a bit of weight there. I like to just actually feel like I'm holding something. And again, I think going back to water brushes because they are a lot lighter, I kind of don't feel like I'm holding anything there. So for me, having that bit of weight there just means a bit more comfort and a little bit more control over how I'm working. But hey, everyone's different. Anyway, now it is time to paint the star of the show, which is the Robin. By the way, I will also leave the reference link or the photographer, which I used downstairs in the comments or the description. So by all means, check that out. Facebook references for artists, wonderful page, wonderful photographers on there. This photographer was Nicola Elliott. And I'm so happy that they've put some more pictures on there as well, because they are very cute little Robins. Anyway, speaking of robins, as you could see, I adopted the similar technique to what I used on the ivy leaves and did a bit of a let one colour bleed into the other jobby. And I love that. I've got such a nice organic edge where the red breast of the robin re meets up with the rest, well, with the rest of the robin. <laughs> At this stage, it was time to start just adding a few more layers of details over those ivy leaves. And again, I'm still keeping it pretty loose, but I'm just adding a tiny little bit of definition where those lighter patches are and just a hint of where the veins are on the leaves. Again, as demonstrated, this brush had no problem with adding finer details in there and I go even finer still as the picture progresses. The paint's laid up really nicely. You could see the layers beneath as well as the more defined layers over the top. So I was really happy with that. Ah, I also forgot to mention, I did a light wash for the, it's actually sitting on a horseshoe. The original picture, I thought it was on a branch, but it's actually within a horseshoe. Either way, I used a little tiny bit of the burnt umber and some of the Payne's gray, just to get a nice base color down there. And now it was time to add a lot more colour and pigment to our robin here. The red copper colour that's included in the palette was just perfect for getting those darker tones towards the bottom of the robin there. And then I introduced a little bit of the cadmium orange, just again to add a little bit more depth in there. And whilst I'm doing this, I'm adding in teeny tiny brush strokes for those teeny tiny feathers on there. By adding that first layer down, it doesn't matter if all of my little detailing marks aren't right next to each other because obviously there is a pigmented layer beneath. So it was nice to be able to perhaps be a little loose with my mark making, but still at the same time, I guess I just can't break that old habit of going too detailed. But I really like the balance of the loose painting with the more detailed stuff, so I can't grumble at that. And as that robin is starting to look a lot more vibrant than the layer before, I decided it was probably a good idea to add another layer to those ivy leaves. For that final layer, I added just a smidgen more sap green in there and a little dash more of the Payne's Grey because I just wanted those final details to really stand out. Whilst, of course, at least keeping the leaves pretty loose. And again, I was really happy by the time we got to a third layer on these leaves now, I was still happy with how these paints performed. So yeah, I can't grumble. 
I'm also really glad I did do a third layer in general because I just felt like it was just looking a little bit too flat. My colour choices probably could have been a little bit better, but going in there for that third and final coat, perfection. I was very happy with it, created a sense of depth, which is what I wanted there. I didn't find that there was any reactivation of the layers beneath as well, which sometimes can happen, but with the colours I used, the colour placement, there wasn't an issue. And I was really happy with how this painting was coming along. I thought I'd just go in there one last time with that dilution I used for the horseshoe, or the branch, it's definitely a horseshoe though. And that was just to add a bit of a rough texture there, just so it didn't look quite so flat. It also helped to add a few shadows beneath where those ivy leaves were sitting too. I decided to use the mask tone of the Payne's Grey to add the eyes and the beak for the robin and I didn't feel like I needed to add any mid-tones in there. I thought let's keep this bird's eyes nice and bright as well as having a nice shiny beak there and I think it just looked a lot cuter as well. And I'm so glad I did a robin. I think they're so cute. We're trying to sort of get birds to come in our garden at the moment. The house we're in is a new build, so it's it's proving a bit of a challenge there. However, we are getting quite a lot of the smaller birds coming in, and as long as Chester doesn't sit at the window barking at them, they do stay for a while. Anyway, I'm waffling a little bit there. We're at a good stage of the picture now. I wanted to give that pen a try, and it worked absolutely fine over the top of the paints that I'd laid down. It just helped to wrap everything up together. It's not very often I do add a line work over the top of the watercolours, but I actually did want to just give this a try and I wasn't disappointed and I probably might adopt this technique further down the line. I also thought it was really helpful for just adding a little additional texture there on the horseshoe, as well as just adding a bit of an outline to those ivy leaves too. And I actually quite like the style of this as well. It's very illustrative. So let's give a bit of an overview over this. I know it was gifted to me, but I actually did genuinely enjoy using these paints. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're a beginner, I think you've kind of got a whole set there. I probably would advise perhaps picking up a little bit more paper because painting can be quite addictive. I love the little pouch it comes in. Everything that I've shown on screen here, apart from the paper I use myself, it all fits in there. So it is super travel friendly. I'm not a real traveller with my art supplies, however, I do like to keep all my stuff together because I'm really messy, so it's nice just to be able to keep that all together and then I can put my hands on it and use it straight away without having to ferry it around looking for stuff. They were really nice to paint with, the paint itself applied beautifully, I love the travel brush, and overall it was just presented really nicely, but of course let me know what you guys think down below. I want to say a massive thank you for watching as well as a massive thank you again to Grabby for sending me this to try. There should be some more lovely videos on screen that I think you're going to enjoy so why not give one of those a click too. In the meantime, I'll see you soon. Bye!